The question is that the motion be agreed to. I recognise the honourable member. David Cunn. Well, I, I, Mr Speaker, I'm pleased that you do. We've worked together for about 15 years and I'm, I'm glad you still can, sir. Uh, Mr Speaker, I rise to take a short call to uh, support this bill and I, in doing so, wish to offer a sincere apology to my Labour colleagues gathered here on the benches because I'm afraid, colleagues, I'm going to have to say something nice about the National Party members. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the work of the then chairman of the FEC, now the minister who's just resumed his seat, the Honourable Todd McClay, who did a pretty decent job of steering this bill through the Select Committee and earned the Labour Party's support for it. Secondly, I would like to compliment David Bennett, and I don't know that I've ever done this on camera in my entire parliamentary career, but I actually have to say David Bennett did a good thing with this bill, because David Bennett actually uh, knew enough about the accounting of farm accounts because he's an accountant who specialises in fiddling farm accounts and he knew from past experience some of the lurks and perks and he was able to generously share that with the Finance and Expenditure Committee and ironed out some of the kinks that I would have a sneaking suspicion that his clients might have benefited from once, twice or two or three hundred times in the past. Mr Speaker, I also want to compliment Paul Goldsmith, the new chair of the Finance and Expenditure Committee, who inherits the large shoes left by Todd McClay. And we wish the new chair well, and here endeth the lesson, Mr Speaker, because that's all the being nice I've got time for tonight. <laughs> On with the business, Mr Speaker. What is fascinating to New Zealanders about this bill is not so much what is in it, but what is not in it. What is not in it is the thing which was able to unite the Council of Trade Unions and well-known right-wing blogger, no, not Simon Lusk, not Cameron Slater, next best thing, Matthew Hooten. So as Todd McClay once so rightly said, anything Matthew Hooten and the Council of Trade Unions can agree on, I'll be sure to rubber stamp. True. Matthew Hooten said enough is enough, and I agree with him on this, any tax which has compliance costs double the value of the revenue that it raises has got to be a nonsense. It was a dog and it barked. And what is, what is most interesting is not that the government finally, under pressure from the good old Labour Party, stripped the car park tax out of this bill, it's that it took them months and months to see the obvious. Now, it may have been that the Honourable Peter Dunn God rest his soul, the former Minister of Revenue, may have been just a little preoccupied with various spooky things to have noticed that this car park tax was an absolute dog, but it got past the goalie. It got into the public domain, the Minister was backing it, and there was such a furore that in the end, with its tail between its legs, the government had to come crawling to the Select Committee and beg its removal. And which, of course, being generous and good-hearted people, we were only too happy to assent to on, on behalf of New Zealanders. So, Mr Speaker, I lay that before you because this is fascinating. This is a bill that we all agree on now that the government stripped the worst stupidity out of it. Now that it's incorporated some of David Bennett's learnings from a past life as he's turned from poacher to sort of gamekeeper. Gamekeeper within the context of the National Party, the Poachers Party, but hey. Mr Speaker, this is a very interesting bill because the car park tax is actually not a standalone. It's one of the Fab Four. Oh. The Fab Four stupid taxes that the National Government has been working on this year. The second one is the iPad tax, so-called. They are going to put, or they were, before we got onto it, going to put fringe benefit tax on everybody's private use of their cell phones and their iPads, no. and they would have to go through their phone bills and account which were their private calls and which were their public or business calls, and then pay fringe benefit tax on their private calls. And if that wasn't hard enough, imagine trying to do that with your data use. <laughs> what if you were on a all-you-can-eat, bundled-up, total-for-the-month data plan? How would you apportion that? Well, in comes the Labor government and the Labor opposition, not quite yet the government, soon to be. The Labor opposition just pointing out these few factoids to the government. They finally got their heads around the fact that the iPad tax was never going to work and they finally killed it 
before it got to the committee so they wouldn't have another iPad tax debacle. Now, nobody told the national government, how do you like this? They decided they were going to tax your iPad use, but they forgot to tax Apple, the people that make the iPads. Apple pays, now I'm not wanting to be personal about any particular company, and of course their accounts are their own business. I'm sure it's all legal. You know, he says under privilege. I'm sure it's all legal anyway. But the truth is that they paid a total tax in New Zealand last year of about 1%. About 1% of profit, about 2.5% of revenue, about 1% of profit. That company apparently makes almost no money in New Zealand. And if the minister over there hadn't noticed, their stuff isn't cheap. How is it that Apple and Google and the like can operate for pure charity in a jurisdiction like New Zealand? And the answer is because the government's too stupid to write rules to make them pay their fair share of tax. It's so obvious that even the OECD has taken up the cudgels and the government's finally had to admit they're behind the eight ball and they're going to fix it up. But they'll probably need the Labor Party's help with David Parker and others to actually do the detail because they haven't got a clue. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, the third of the fab four stupid taxes that the government's been beavering away on, Minister, listen up because we're coming after you on this one, is the clergy tax. This is an abomination, quite literally, because the government will probably burn for years over this. They want to tax fringe benefit tax on clergy housing and in one fell swoop put most of the churches out of business. Now my old man, my dad, God rest his soul, he was a wonderful man, cared about the poor, they called him the Red Reverend, I wonder why, he was an Anglican minister. Now I tell you, I grew up in a family that didn't have two bucks spare at the end of the week because, duh, clergy don't get paid much, they do it for love, literally. And they survive because they get a rent-free or near-rent-free house to live in because they don't get paid a full salary. Except that the National Party wants to impute a supposed value of their clergy housing and then make them pay fringe benefit tax on the total amount even though they've never received it. Good God, imagine someone heated their houses, there might be a heating tax as well. I tell the National Party this, I'm going to maintain the deal we had with the Honourable Peter Dunn, and he is honourable, I think, which is, if you fix it, we won't complain about it. But please don't bring the clergy tax to the Select Committee, because Paul Goldsmith doesn't need a nightmare like the iPad tax. Ladies and gentlemen, if that wasn't dumb enough, wait for the fourth instalment of the fad for stupid taxes the government's been working on. Yes, there's more. You know that the National Party crows that they are rebuilding Christchurch. They are, of course, the beneficiaries of major reinsurance flows which are helping the sagging economic growth rate strip it out. It's of only about a half the normal long-run average growth rate, as David Parker so well pointed out. National wants to tax temporary accommodation for Christchurch rebuild workers. They are going to slap fringe benefit tax on temporary accommodation for people like engineers from Auckland who moved down to Christchurch to help the good people of Christchurch get back on their feet. Wham! End of the month, FBT, if you've been staying in a hotel, you lucky person, you got to have hotel food. Fringe benefit tax on you. Now, where has the National Party been? It's OK for someone like Jamie Lee Martanga Soprano Ross because he's never had a real job, and we can forgive him. He came straight from kindy to Parliament. But, but seasoned international diplomats, like the current Minister of Revenue, should be worldly enough to know that taxing clergy on income they've never earned, taxing Christchurch rebuild workers because they have to have a roof over their head in winter in Christchurch, taxing iPads but not taxing Apple, and taxing car parks, which costs twice as much to do as the revenue it raises, is, technically speaking, brain dead. So please, National, don't make us fix all of that again. Please fix it before it gets to the House. Mr Speaker, I see that time is up 
it's a great shame because there are in fact many, many other stupid things that the National Party is doing in the tax portfolio, but I shall have to wait for the committee stage to bring more of those exciting instalments to the New Zealand public. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Paul Goldsmith. Well, thank you. Uh